So today I'm gonna talk about the hexagram. It has intrigued many for centuries, for thousands of years. You see this shape, you see this star, which is shaped like a star everywhere around the world. And it is called the hexagram. Why is it called the hexagram? Because hexa, which in Greek means number six, it has six points or six vertices. And hence why it's called the hexagram. Now, when you see the star, the first thing that comes to your mind is the Star of David, which is used in the Jewish flag, the flag of Israel. You see the six-pointed star, and everyone around the world think of it as the star that represents the Jewish community. But what if I tell you that this star dates back to way, 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 way longer? If anything, the Star of David, which is a symbol for the Jewish community, has only been adopted by Jewish people during the 19th century. But why? Why do the Jewish people call it the Star of David? It is said that it used to be a representation of a shield or a protection from God during battle for David. So David used this shield that's represented by this star to protect him. But it wasn't clear if it was the that six-pointed star, the hexagram, or something else. But somewhat throughout history, people made the connection that the Star of David or the hexagram is the shield of David. So it's the representation of the shield. But not only that, in the Islamic tradition, it is said that the hexagram is a representation of Solomon's ring or the seal of Solomon or the ring of Solomon. They said that Solomon had a ring, a ring that had uh, a hexagram on it and that ring gave him superpowers. It allowed him to control the jinns or what you may know as genies or uh, it gave him the power to speak to animals. It gave him superpowers that ring or the seal of Solomon which is the hexagram was a representation of God. This star has been used all over the place, all around the world, by many traditions, by many religions, by many people. Everyone claims it's theirs, everyone claims that this star is their logo, it's their sigil. But it wasn't only used in these Middle Eastern traditions. This star actually dates back to thousands of years ago because it was used by the Hindus in Hinduism and it's called the Satkona and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. If you go to many Hindu temples, you're gonna see this star, the hexagram, and it's not the Jewish star, it's not the Star of David. And that's very fascinating because you're gonna find yourself in India or in Asia or in any other Asian country that practices Hinduism and you're gonna see in the temples the hexagram. So this is proof that this star is universal. The Sadkona Yantra, and basically Yantra is Sanskrit word for symbol, is a representation of the balance and the harmony between the divine feminine energy and the divine masculine energy. The divine masculine energy represented by the triangle pointing upward, and the feminine energy represented by an equilateral triangle pointing downwards. Like what I'm wearing in this shirt here. You can see it right here. And this also relates to another shape, another beautiful shape that many of you might have seen or might have heard of, which is called the Sri Yantra. Again, Yantra meaning just, it's a Sanskrit word for symbol. Sri Yantra is practiced by a sect of Buddhists or a sect of Hindus. I think it's a sect of Hindus and that's their logo, the Sri Yantra. And it also has a lot of triangles pointing upwards and a lot of triangles pointing downwards. And it also represents the balance and the harmony between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. But this hexagram hasn't been only used by religious people. It has been also used in alchemy. In alchemy in the mid-centuries in Europe and also in the 7th and 8th century in the Middle East, alchemists used the hexagram as a symbol for the elements, for the balance and the connectedness and interconnectedness of the elements. 
The triangle pointing upwards represents fire, and the one downward represents water. You also have earth with a line on it, as you can see here on the screen, pointing downwards, that's for earth. And another one with a line, again here as you can see, pointing upwards, is a representation of air. When you take these four elements, fire, water, air, and earth, when you superimpose them on each other, they give you the hexagram, the six-pointed star, which is fascinating. And again, every time we come across this symbol, there's always this pattern of balance and harmony between two different elements, or two different genders, or two different energies, if you will. But I want you to see what I have here on the screen. I wanted to go back and see where is the oldest mention of this hexagram, where? Is there any proof that, that it really comes from a long time ago, that it comes from ancient times? One of the earliest finds about the hexagram that I, that I discovered, as you can see in this photo, this hexagram was found in the temple of Baalbek. And Baalbek is right now situated in modern day Lebanon. The Romans used to call this temple Heliopolis, and it's at least 2,000 years old. 2,000 years old. This is a huge, huge stone with the hexagram on it. But there's still a big mystery here because for me, I always wonder why? Why the use of two equilateral triangles? Why not using squares? Why not using rhombuses? Why not using other geometrical shapes? I tried to make the connections of what's going on here. And the hexagram in sacred geometry can be found, can be found inside the shape of Metatron's cube. But it also can be found in the shape of the flower of life, as you can see here. And it also can be found in the shape of the seed of life. Sacred geometry is a representation of harmony and balance because it followed the golden mean and the golden ratio, so it does represent nature which means that the hexagram is also a representation of nature. The hexagram is also used in magic, in witchcraft, in Wicca, white magic, black magic, whatever you want to call it. Because the word hex, after all, when you say someone is hexed or I'm going to hex someone, it comes from hexagram. That's where it comes from, the six-pointed star. In my opinion, it's, it's a universal shape. I think everywhere you go in the universe, you find a shape. I'm sure if you go to another dimension, you go to another planet, you're gonna find it there too. So I have much, much more information about this shape and I'm gonna share it with you in other videos, but I'm so passionate about it. I love it so much and I'll see you in the next one.